welcome, welcome. Okay, so I'm not quite sure why you guys are seeing my mixer. So you're supposed to be live on me. Um, okay, so I'm sorry for the late start. We have been having technical difficulties over here. That is always fun. <laughs> not. Uh, did I just give away my age by saying not? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, for some reason, it, we cannot get connected to Facebook today. And it took me a long time to get connected to YouTube, so I don't know if there's something on my side of things with the internet or if there's something about live streaming today in general. Um, so fingers crossed, it's working. So if you are here and if you are watching, please um, please comment so I know it's working. <laughs> Um, sorry to see our Facebook audience not uh, on with us today because they tend to be a little bit more talkative, uh, but it's always kind of nice to just focus on one thing at a time. Like, I should be focusing on you right now, but instead I'm focusing on unwrapping the butter because I didn't do that while I was trying to get the streams live. So, uh, um, Terry, yay, we have one person talking. That means it must be working, right? <laughs> okay, sorry. Last of the recipe prep. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but this time of year, I pretty much get a package. Oh, I forgot to preheat the oven. I'm glad I thought of that. Okay, <laughs> I pretty much get a new package on my doorstep three or four times a day, right? And um, I got a package right as I was trying to get all this working. And so I'm like, oh, I'll just go grab it and bring it in while I was trying to see if it would work. And when I picked them up, they weren't even that heavy. But when I picked them up, I did something to my back. And I am in a lot of pain. <laughs> so forgive me if, um, yeah, forgive me if I do anything really bad today. Okay. Uh, Joseph, hello. Uh, Eunice, first like. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Sierra, California, Tammy, Sherry, Terry. Sherry, Terry, that rhymes. Uh, people have had hurricanes with torrential rains. Maybe in Utah we're not having bad weather, but you never know what's going to affect anything. Uh, you can hear me okay. Thank you so much, Laura. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. Love you. Oh, thank you. Is it Eunice? Thank you, Eunice, so much. Uh, Patricia, hello. Terry, what has been my most favorite thing that I have made? Oh, wow. That's a hard question. Um, let's see. My kids all each have their favorite. My oldest favorite is gumbo. My second oldest favorite is turkey wild and rice soup. We tend to be a soup family. Um, I really enjoy my sous vide steak, but I really love foreign food too. So, uh, and I used to live in Japan, so anything Japanese I really enjoy. Um, for cakes, it's usually my most string cake. Like I... You guys, not to toot my own horn, but I think my Anna and Elsa cakes turned out amazing. And it's always nice when you design a cake and it turns out as good as you hope. So usually with cake decorating, it's my most recent. Usually with desserts, it's usually something recent. Um, anyway, so this dessert is so new. These cookies that I'm making today are so new that they're not even on my blog yet. Because I made them on Saturday for a church party. We had a church Christmas party on Saturday and I signed up for dessert as a typically do. <laughs> Shocking, I know. And all of a sudden, it's Saturday afternoon because I was working all morning on getting my new uh, YouTube video up last Saturday. And uh, all of a sudden, it was three o'clock in the afternoon and I had three hours to make something. And as my kids were spewing out ideas of, of desserts that they like, that they think are Christmassy enough for a Christmas party, I'm like, that takes too much time. That takes too much time. That takes too much time. And then I thought, well, we can just make the, uh, Le uh, the Levain Bakery copycat chocolate chip cookies that I've been making chocolate chip pecans. I've been making a batch a week. <laughs> they're super easy to whip up. And then as I'm like, they're not very Christmassy, you know, to be fair. Uh, and then I remember that I had a bunch of uh, peppermint, peppermint baking chips. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do a chocolate version with peppermint baking chips. Easy peasy. It'll be awesome. And then the kids liked them so much. They're like, mom, this should go on your blog. So as I was working on what should I do for today's uh, live stream video, they're like, you should make those cookies again. I think they just want to eat them. But so that is what we were doing today. Uh, and of course, Sunday, they were all eaten up by church members. And so I didn't take, I couldn't take any pictures. So the blog post is written. It is just waiting for pictures. Of course, here where I live, it's already dark outside. So pictures won't be up till tomorrow morning. So for you watching on YouTube, the recipe is in the recipe card. Just click the show more button for the description. And there will be a printable version on my blog tomorrow as soon as I get the pictures edited. So 
Let's get started. Um, okay, so first off, let's do the shun. Uh, we're gonna do the butter. Now, this looks like a lot of butter, kind of because it is. This is two cups of butter. And you just wanna give that a quick whip just to soften it up. Now, the reason that it is so much better is because um, the, a normal sized batch, I call a normal sized batch, one that starts with like one cup of butter, um, two eggs, you know, stuff like that. It makes about, usually they make about 40 cookies. Well, this batch, because we're doing such large cookies, uh, this would only make 18 cookies if I did it a normal sized batch. So this batch is kind of doubled in size because again, I kind of like getting close to that 40 cookie amount. Um, you do not have to make this size batch. In fact, if you go to my uh, recipe card on my website, there's a way where you can change the serving size and you can make it a smaller batch. My sister likes to make a half batch and only make like four of these cookies. <laughs> but I'm like, as long as I'm putting the work into them, I'm gonna do it once. I'm gonna cook up six, cause we're a family of six. Um, and then I'm going to make the dough balls and freeze them. And then I can bake a cookie anytime I want. I usually would say, oh, I'm gonna make six cookies, you know, six different times and we'll, we'll all gonna have six cookies. But I'm not that fair. And I tend to bake a lot of like one cookie at a time when it's just me at home working. So my kids are always like, where's the cookie dough balls? I'm like, oh, they're gone. And they're like, we got one cookie. And I'm like, that means I ate. I don't think I wanna know. <laughs> so uh, anyway, but I do like freezing them and just being able to bake up one fresh cookie at a time. So uh, next up, we're going to add the sugar. So I do, I like to do half and half when it comes to my sugars. I like to do half white sugar and, oh, unwrap it, half brown sugar. And again, we want to beat this till it goes creamy. Should lighten up in color and be um, and be nice and soft. So that is looking good. Now we're going to oh I must have spilled the eggs. There's a little puddle of egg whites. Remove the bowl. So we're gonna add four eggs and we're gonna add some vanilla. Oh and I forgot to refill my vanilla container. So usually I would do two teaspoons. We're gonna do one because. My big, huge, I have a big, huge Costco size vanilla, like this big, but it's like way over there. So, um, uh, Terry satisfying. Yes. Joseph, how am I doing tonight? Other than being an excruciating pain from picking up a box I shouldn't have picked up, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, do you like my stainless steel bowl? Sherry, that's a great question. Um, obviously, I love my Bosch. I bought a stainless steel bowl myself years ago to use for frostings, especially royal icings, uh, because they can be affected by any grease left and plastic bowls tend to hold on a little bit to that grease. Um, I mean, other, unless you like drench it in soap, they just, I don't know, if you ever felt the inside of a plastic uh, mixing bowl, they just kind of have a little bit of something left, no matter how clean they are. Um, so I bought a stainless steel bowl specifically to use for frosting, so now I have two. <laughs> Um, and I do, I really like it. Um, I, I like both. I like the plastic one for certain things. I kind of gravitate to one or the other, depending on what I'm making. For cookies, either one works just fine. I don't have a preference for cookies. This is just what I had. My other Bosch is just over there. <laughs> um, you love my channel. Thank you, Kelly. My hair looks great. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, your favorite is chocolate cake. Oh, I do make a really good chocolate cake. That's probably the thing that gets made the most at my house um, is my chocolate cake because uh, because I use it as a base for pretty much everything. Okay, so we're going to beat this now. Now look how smooth and creamy that's already looking. Oh, you know what? It's, folk, it's not even focusing on the dough. Hold on, forgive me while I change my camera. There we go. Is so it focusing on the dough better now? We could do this camera too. Let's brighten that up a little bit. Oh, maybe not that much. Okay. 
Uh, so now we're going to add uh, half the flour. Now this is actually cake flour. I do half cake flour, half normal flour for these cookies uh, to kind of give them a little bit of softness. There, um, there's some mistakes going around. Some people say that the reason you add cake flour to cookies is to help with the rising, but there's actually no leavening agent in cake flour, so that's an impossibility. Cake flour is made from normal flour with a different protein level than all-purpose flour. So you can make your own uh, cake flour at home, which I do all the time, by taking seven parts of all-purpose flour and one part cornstarch and, and with, uh, sifting those together. I did that earlier this morning. I sifted like five times, I think. Um, to get them properly mixed and aerated um, and then, then that's what I'm using for this recipe. So um, uh, if you're an American and you're using cups, take out two tablespoons of flour for every cup and put in two tablespoons of cornstarch. I always just do seven cups because I do a big batch at once. Seven cups flour, one cup cornstarch and whisk that together uh, or sift that together. Anyway, so uh, it does not help with the leavening at all. It's just a different protein level and so it gives you a different density in your cookies. We're also going to add some dark cocoa. Now this is not normal cocoa, this is the dark cocoa. Uh, I like the flavor better and I like the color that it brings to these dark cookies. Come on. All right, we're gonna put the lid on so we don't get a big huge cloud dust of cocoa and flour. going to all the way back. Um, I'm going to take the beaters out now before we add the rest of the flour because this actually becomes um, a fairly thick dough. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, my cameras do not want to change. So this becomes a fairly thick dough. So yeah, I'm just going to take the whisks out now, but I always want to get that cocoa whisked in really good so it's not at all clumpy. And I like to mix the cocoa in with some flour. So that's why I do half the flour um, along with the cocoa together. Okay. Usually I do a spatula for this, but I am feeling a little frazzled with my back hurting, so I'm just going for it. Good thing I wash my hands like three gazillion times when I'm making a video with you guys. <laughs> okay. Now... You can switch over to the cookie paddles. You can actually start with the cookie paddles, but with really thick cookie doughs, I always recommend switching over to the dough hook. You know what? I'm gonna get the dough hook extender. Hold on. Oh, where is it? This is an additional piece that I like. Oop, the dough hook extender. Because it makes it so this center post gets closer right here and scrapes that center a little bit better. So it's kind of like having the scrapers on the whisks, but on the dough hook. So I like the dough hook extender, especially when you're making small batches of dough. But honestly, I use it for all batches of dough. All right, hold on, wash my hands. Oh my word, that dough got everywhere. Okay, <laughs> so now we're going to add the rest of the flour. This is all purpose flour. I'm going to add the baking powder. Now this is the leavening agent. Now you use, uh, so baking powder, let's see if my camera wants to work now. <laughs> it does not. Okay, cut, there we go. <laughs> Finally got the cameras to change. Um, so baking powder is baking soda, but with cream of tartar in it. So baking soda is a base, and cream of tartar is a little bit acidic, so they balance each other out. So if there's no acid in your recipe at all, use baking powder. Now if there is acid in your recipe, then just use baking soda, and the baking soda will balance the acidity in your recipe. Um, some people like to use both. I will say that I have found that just adding a little bit, a teaspoon of baking soda to this recipe does seem to help with that uh, internal softness. But I've made this both ways with 
only baking powder and with this mix of baking powder, baking soda. And I don't know if it was in my mind that there was a difference. <laughs> it could totally have been. I'm willing to admit that 100%. Um, or if it was legit made a difference. Or if it just happened to be a better batch for some random reason. But ever since then, I have been adding that one teaspoon of baking soda. If you want to just use baking powder, do the one tablespoon and the one teaspoon. You still want the same amount of rising agent. Okay, now we're going to also add a teaspoon of salt. Oh no, I just spilled a bunch of the white chocolate. Oh, you guys, I'm just talented today. What can I say? Oh man, I got this chocolate everywhere. <laughs> All right. Now the one negative to the dough hooks is that there is not a scraper on the outside. So I'm going to quickly do, oh, this dough is so thick. Quickly do a scrape of the outside. And, but look how nice and clean the post is. <laughs> All right, let's do one more beat. All right, so you can see, if you can focus, come on, there we go. You can see what a thick dough this is. It's because we want these to be really big fat cookies. You can see that they're not even really getting me dirty anymore. So we're, uh, now it's for the mix-ins. So uh, in the original recipe, it calls for uh, chocolate chips and pecans. And I love that crunch that the pecans give it. So the first time that I made it, I did, uh, I did just, uh, Ghirardelli's, where are those? Okay, so I found Ghirardelli's peppermint baking chips and Andy's mints peppermint, uh, peppermint crunch baking mints. So, but when I, I used up all the storage that I had from last year that I had bought. So I went back to the store to buy more to make this video and I went to four different stores and none of them had it. So I ordered some from Amazon, but it's not gonna be here till this weekend because I wanna make these again. Um, so. This is what I did. I went to the store and I bought the Ghirardelli's, um, I bought the Ghirardelli's peppermint. Now they come with chocolate on the bottom at the store, the squares, and I cut them up really small. Still pretty chunky. Um, the baking chips are just white chocolate. So this will be a little bit different depending on what you get. And then I also got these, the peppermint Andy's mints and I chopped them up really small to be like the bits but I only did the peppermint chips in my batch on Saturday. And I felt like, even though it was good, I felt like it needed a little bit more chocolate oomph. So I'm also going to, I'm gonna do half chocolate. So it's a double chocolate chip. Um, and then half these uh, pe two peppermint white chocolate, I guess chips is the wrong word, um, chunks. <laughs> and then I missed that crunch that the pecans give these cookies. So I'm also gonna add some crushed candy cane. So this is actually the first time I'm putting these things together. So fingers crossed that they taste just as good as when it was just peppermint. Um, so, and this is uh, Trader Joe's chocolate. I like using Trader Joe's. Uh, these are the chocolate chunks versus the chocolate chips. I like using the Trader Joe's chocolate in cookies because they, um, unlike most chocolate chip recipes out there that have the coating that helps them hold the shape and they stay really chocolate chippy even when you're baking them. These actually, Trader Joe's chocolate actually gets melty and gooey, which I personally like. If you don't want your cookies to be super messy, then any other brand of chocolate chips works just fine. It'll be just as delicious. Just a, It's just a different outcome. All right, so we're gonna mix, um, let's see. We're just gonna put them all in. So then here's the Ghirardelli's. Here's the Andes, and then here's the candy canes. Oh, that's a lot. Uh, Joseph, how do you sign up for my email list? Um, if you go to my blog, 
over on the, so if you're looking at my blog and here's the post and here's the sidebar, over on the sidebar there's a little thing that says get my maple icing recipe and that will sign you up for my email list. Um, or at the very bottom, if you scroll all the way to the bottom on any post, there will also be a sign up for the newsletter here. Um, Tina, it's a Bosch. Yes, sorry about that. Uh, no, the Facebook Live is not marking, Margaret. I tried, I was actually late starting because I had tried so long to get it to work. Um, you love a mixer, pre share, Tina. Yes, Kelly is right. This is a Bosch Universal Mixer. Um, I will add a link to the comments when I have a second. Uh, you're. Oh, <laughs> I read the first comment, Terry. I'm like, your mouse waters. Your mouth. Your mouth waters every time, yes. Uh, okay, so let's see how the Bosch does with all of these mix ins. I haven't done. Duh. Oh man, it just goes right through it like butter. Look at that. Easy peasy. I used, I made the mistake, look how it even like cleans the sides. I made the mistake of um, using my, my cookie paddles all the way through this recipe last time I made them. And I actually ended up breaking my cookie paddles, which I go through cookie paddles on the Bosch because they're plastic. I go through like three sets a year. It's my own fault, but um, anyway, I was smart enough to switch over to my dough hook, and it just, bam, powdered, powered through that. Okay, I'm going to get the mixer out of the way so we can move on to the next part of this, and then while the cookies are baking, I will, oops, <laughs> don't worry, nothing broke, I'm okay. Uh, I will catch up on comments as soon as I get the first batch in the oven, so swipe through on the counter. I will say, it's as much as I miss kind of having um, two video feeds, because then there's twice as many comments to keep me answering, I kind of like not having to keep my eyeballs on both. Okay. All right, so first thing uh, that we're going to do is talk about the cookie size. So these cookies, um, traditionally at Levain Bakery, there we go. These cookies are six ounces, and they're like this big. But I don't feel the need to, um, I don't feel the need to give my kids almost, what is that, a third of a pound of cookies? Um, I think a sixth of a pound is just fine. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is this is the large cookie scoop that I use perfectly for cupcakes, and I'm gonna scoop some of the dough. Now, I'm not, I've done these cookies so often that I know that I don't want it to be perfectly flat. I'm going to leave it a little bit bulged over. Oh, wait, this is like the worst. It doesn't handle cookies very well. There we go. All right. So let's see how close I am. Oops, zero out. There we go. What? That is so weird. This should be three ounces, not two. Something's wrong with my... No, draw with my scale. Oh, my mixer was touching it. Okay, let's try this again. So close. I was so close. Okay. There we go. So anywhere from three to like 3.15, I'm okay with. But I don't want to put the cookie on the uh, cookie sheet like this because it will get smooth cookies. So what I always do is I always break the cookie in half. And I put it on the rack like this, so it's nice and rough. Alright, so. Man, I'm so disappointed. I thought I'd be like right on. I don't even bother using the scale most of the time because I've gotten so good at it. But apparently, I'm a big fat liar because I'm not that good at it. Oh, man. So close again. Alright. I'm gonna leave it just a little bit more, a little bit more bulgy, see if that does the trick. Ah! Oh! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, so much for my eye. I made um, the, the chocolate chip pecan ones at my sister's house over Thanksgiving. And she doesn't have a scale 
or a big scoop. So I had to eyeball the cookies. It was so rough. They were all different sizes. Oh, I can smell the peppermint from these peppermint chips already. There we go. Okay. I like to do about six on um, six on the tray at a time. I thought that one for sure was going to get it. Okay. Oh. Bring the cookie sheet over. So I'm going to do the same thing with all these. I'm going to break them apart. And leave them nice and rough. Now if you really want your cookies to have a really pretty look to them, one of the things that you can do is you can actually leave some of the chips out, whether you leave out some of the peppermint ones or some of the chocolate ones, it doesn't really matter, but leave some out and place them on top. And you'll always have that nice like chocolatey bit on top of your cookies. So now we're going to bake these from eight to nine minutes. So I'm going to go back to scooping and weighing balls and getting them uh, ready for the next batch. Um, and in the meantime, I will catch up in comments. Okay. Um, let's see. I don't know how far back I need to go. Um, dang. You guys have been busy commenting today. Okay. Uh, we will start there. What? My alarm for turning on my Christmas lights, otherwise I forget. Um, lay on the floor. Uh, I will try that, Kelly, for my back pain. Thank you. I like your cakes and you. Thank you so much. Uh, Sierra, you love my channel. Thank you. You made flapjacks a cake the other day. Like pancake cakes? Or a cake that looked like pancakes, because I've seen both. Um, what tool is the handiest? Oh, probably my Bosch Universal Mixer. Um, uh, she gets used every day. Like, without fail, she gets used every day. Um, I mean, my oven is an obvious one, because it gets used all the time. Um, my soapbox that I'm always telling um, people that they should use, I'm really a big fan of thermometers. Uh, I'm a fan of a uh, oven thermometer. Uh, it's really important to know the temperature of your oven, and depending on your oven calibration, it can be really off. My oven, uh, when I first moved into this house, was about 25 degrees off, um, but it changes over time as well. So having keeping an oven thermometer in my oven, I think, is really crucial. And then if you do, oh man, the stove is so thick, my. Um, Scoop doesn't like it very much. This scoop has always been a bad one. I need to buy a new one. Um, uh, it's, and then, yeah, if you make any meat of any kind, um, turkey, pork, steaks, I think it's really important to have a really good meat thermometer as well. And then, of course, uh, for candy making, which I do a lot as well, um, you need a good candy thermometer. So I'm a big fan that I think thermom thermometers are a really good tool. And, oh, my gosh. They're really, um, they're really not that expensive. An oven thermometer is pretty cheap. Um, you can get a decent meat thermometer for not a bad price. Um, I have moved on to kind of the better meat thermometer at this point in my uh, cooking career. <laughs> I really like the Thermoworks and the Thermapen, um, but I didn't start out with one of those. And I think it's important to have one. And a cheap one works just fine and is a great way to start. So that's a tool that I highly recommend. Um, let's see. I like my stainless steel bowl. I did that. Um, up here in Fargo, you make homemade spaghetti and Swedish meatballs for Christmas. That's really unique. I hadn't heard that one. We do tamales because my grandma grew up in Mexico. So we do tamales uh, for a Christmas tradition. Obviously, I always make homemade eggnog and stuff like that um, as well. Um, I, I love hearing about, I would love to hear everybody else's like Christmas traditions. My, um, ex, ex aunt in law, um, they had, a was it Swedish? 
I think it was a Swedish tradition, and I don't know how authentic this is. That's just what she just said. My husband's Swedish, and this is a tradition that we have. Um, that they did soup the night before on Christmas Eve. So they always had a Christmas Eve soup night that was always fun to participate in. Um, but yeah, I do a full-blown turkey mashed potato stuffings on Christmas Eve. Uh, in the morning, I do liege waffles or eggnog french toast or cinnamon rolls, depending on what my kids want that year. Um, and then for Christmas Day, we do, uh, I do tamales. So that's a fun one for us. Uh, you love my videos and chocolate cake is your favorite. Nice. Uh, do you own pets? I do, Terry. <laughs> do I own pets? That's adorable. Uh, <laughs> I started out with two cats uh, because I had a mouse problem. And I'm not really an animal, like, fanatic. I like them just fine. But I'm not an, at, like, a, I don't consider my, my cats my babies. No offense to anybody. It's just not who I am. To be fair, I have five babies and an ex-husband, so it's probably more than enough. Um, uh, but we had a mouse problem here where I live. There's a creek in the back and um, it just brings in mice. So we got cats. And uh, I had two. And then one of them sadly died. Um, and the other one was just really lonely without her sister. And so when she had babies, I kept another one. And I feel like everybody deserves to be a mother at least once. And I'm just really, I say busy, but really it's just like, ugh, I don't want to do it. So I never got either of them fixed. And now they're both having litters. And uh, they don't like each other. Even though they're mother and daughter, they do not like each other. And so the daughter always hides her litter from me. So currently I have... Um, two cats that come inside all the time. Like, we only allow them in one room of the house because, again, I'm a chef, so they're only allowed in one room in the house. Um, but we have two cats that come inside pretty regularly and like us, mother-daughter. Um, the mother's most recent litter has a kitten who still comes inside that we haven't been able to get rid of. Uh, and, but then the daughter's kittens, she has three that she hid from me and by the time I, we found them they were so big and so scared of people that I can't catch them and I can't seem to give them away so I'm trying to determine what to do with them I told the kids we got to be down to one cat by the end of Christmas break so I'm trying to figure out what to do because there's three that I just can't catch in order to give to give away um so yeah currently right now I have six cats and I'm hoping to be down I'm planning I must be down but to one by the end of Christmas break that is my rule I'm imposing on myself um, cause they just, they're just costing me a buttload of money in, um, in cat food and they're not catching any mice. I still, I had a mouse problem pretty recently that I had to pay an exterminator for. So yeah. Oh my word, you guys, this is driving me batty. It keeps breaking. Um, anyways, yes, I do have pets. Uh, is there anything she doesn't know? <laughs> uh, yes, Kelly, there is plenty that I don't know, but... I love, um, I love learning and I love finding things out. So when people leave me questions like on YouTube or on my blog, I like doing the research, research, <laughs> research to figure it out. Uh, let's see. What did somebody ask me recently? Um, oh, somebody was making my homemade eggnog and they were asking me about, uh, how it deflates cause it has egg whites. It, you beat up egg whites to soft peaks and mix them into the egg custard, um, to help create a thicker sauce. And, you know, egg whites eventually deflate. So he was asking me what I could do about it. So I'm like, man, mine don't deflate that much. They deflate a little, but not that much. And he was saying that his were deflating a lot. So I just started doing research on what can keep egg whites from deflating and stuff like that. Anyway, so I gave a bunch of answers. Hopefully it works out for him. Um, but, yeah, I don't know everything. But I do love learning if there's something that I don't know. Um, so what I'm going to do with most of these balls after, oh good, we only have two minutes left. After those cookies come out, um, I'm actually going to freeze them. Now, if I freeze them in this ball shape, um, when I pull them out of the freezer, they're obviously just going to want to cook like that. But if I rip them, oh, one minute left. If I rip them before I freeze them, then I'll still have that craggly look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out a cookie sheet, line it with parchment paper, and then I'm going to create these little craggle balls, and I'm going to leave them I'm not going to put them right next to each other because it'll be hard to break apart. I'll leave them separate, freeze them, and then after a couple hours when they're frozen, then I can just put them in a Ziploc bag and leave them sealed in a Ziploc bag. And I usually double bag them um, until I'm ready. And then I can just pull one or two out to bake them as I feel the hunger <laughs> I need. 
All right. I'm gonna make some room here from these balls so we can bring over the final cookies. Um, uh, you would, <laughs> you're glad I'm your food teacher. Thank you so much, Terry and Kelly. Um, your food teacher said flour is made up of baking powder and bicarbonate of sod? Well, did she mean like a pastry flour or something? I don't know how to make my own pastry flour, um, but that would, that would surprise me. Oops, I didn't need to push clear. Leave that on. Okay, let's pull out the cookies. Oh, this is where my back room hurts. Here they are, and as you can tell, they still look, I don't know if you can tell, let's get a little closer. They still look pretty gooey, right? And with, um, dark, with dark chocolate cookies like this, it's hard to tell if they get that golden brown. Like with a normal cookie, I would say, bake it until it has a nice golden brown on the outside. But we also want these a little bit on the runnier side, so I'm gonna trust, and you can see where that white chocolate right there is, you can see that getting golden. So I'm gonna trust that nine minutes is working, and I'm gonna pull these off the heat. So these cookies, these, co oh, come on camera. <laughs> these cookies bake at 400 degrees, which is much hotter than you would traditionally cook cookies. Um, and that gives them a nice crisp outside. And so if they're normal cookies, you can see that golden coloring. Obviously it's a little harder with chocolate cookies. Um, so they get that crisp golden color on the outside, but because they're so fat and so big and all of the mixins that we mixed in, the candy canes and the, oh, I just realized. The candy canes are just going to melt at 400 degrees. They're not going to stay crunchy. Ah, okay. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I was trying to replace those crunchy from the nuts. Um, they also, the inside stays a little bit on the gooey side. So you want to wait at least 15 minutes before you eat these because they kind of need to set up. Otherwise, they're just going to be a gooey, melty mess. Um, and then... Uh, I actually like them after about an hour, they kind of, the center, kind of like a cheesecake, kind of sets. Um, so gooier at the beginning, a little bit more set at the end, but still really soft and slightly underdone on the inside, which also makes it so these cookies last longer. Um, you can eat them in two days and they will still taste amazingly fresh. Now, if you put them in plastic bags to keep them fresh, like a Ziploc bag, that crunchiness on the outside will, will go away because those cookies all inside that bag will have their own moisture content level, so they won't be as crunchy. If you keep them in a brown paper bag, obviously still wrapped up, um, they will stay crunchier on the outside, but they also won't last quite as long. I think they'll still last a couple days, but they won't last, like in the plastic bag, obviously they'll last longer. So just kind of different ways of taking care of this. So, um, let's see, you made dark cocoa cookies once, everyone thought they were burnt. <laughs> yes. That is the problem with the dark cocoa cookies. I love that dark, rich color, but it is, people are like, oh, what's wrong with your cookies? Um, praying a heel soon. Thank you so much, Laura. Uh, you have a paper cut. Oh, that's the worst, especially if you're like working with anything acidic. You love the extenders. I, yeah, I agree. The extenders are amazing. Um, how many times do I bake a week? Oh, well, a week is seven days, so at least seven times. <laughs> Sometimes more. I, I would say it's pretty rare for me not to bake at least once a day. Um, yeah. Uh, the fun part is in summer, it gets about 105 degrees here, and without fail the last three years, my air conditioner, which is too small for the size of my house, I didn't put it in, it was here when I got here, um, always breaks, at least once. And so then I'm usually without a heater for a month and I'm still baking every day. So I'm, I'm committed to baking. <laughs> uh, but it's also my job, right? Uh, very beautiful, thank you so much. The best thing about baking is licking everything. Yes, I agree. Uh, you love the mixer. We got that one. Facebook Live is not working. No. Um, yes, it would be nice to have a dough hook that also scraped the outside. I just don't know how they would do that, but that would be nice. Uh, yes, you do need to order the Bosch. Uh, Laura, uh, I would go to the Bosch website themselves, and I have an affiliate link if you want to wait a minute. I will add that. Um, and they, right now at Christmas time, they, ha they always have sales around Mother's Day and around Christmas time. And they have a baker's bundle that I really recommend that comes with 
like the, because the normal box just comes with the whisks, and the baker bundle also comes with the cake, the cake paddles, and the, oh, it also comes with the dough hook, um, but the baker's bundle also comes with the scrapers, I believe, and the cookie paddles and the cake paddles as well. I really recommend it because I, I use all of those all the time. Uh, looks awesome. What's the social tool? Uh, can you be my food teacher? <laughs> yes. Well, Harry, that's what this channel is for. So, uh, yes, of course. Um, you just bake cookies and to eat the mixture is so tempting. I, you know, my mom is a cookie dough fanatic. In fact, what she does with her normal cookies is she puts them on a cookie sheet and she puts them in the oven for about three minutes and then she pulls them out. Sometimes she doesn't even bother with the oven and she just microwaves them. I'm not a big fan of cooking food in a microwave, so like oh, that just grosses me out. Um, but yeah, she just likes basically warm cookie dough. <laughs> That's her favorite thing to eat. Um, but yeah, I do, I do love some good cookie dough at the end. Uh, you didn't know you could do that with the dough, rough cookie for sure. Oh, right? No, it's awesome. Um, oops. Oh, Laura, thank you so much for helping sponsor me. I really appreciate that. Um, hold on. I accidentally skipped through a bunch of the comments on accident. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to get back so I don't miss anything. Um, oh my word. Uh, you'll send me your chocolate chip butterscotch walnut cookie recipe. Oh, I, that sounds amazing. I love butterscotch and I love nuts. Uh, Joseph, you are so welcome for checking on you. One of my favorite cookie sheets. Oh, that's a great question. So I, um, I go to Costco to get my like my jelly roll pans and, uh, and I probably have like eight of those, but I don't like baking cookies on them. For cookies, I am a really big fan of the ones that kind of have like the the buffer, like the airflow thing in them. This one that I have right here that's my favorite is Sir La Tab. This, hold on, let's bring it over. I really like this Sir La Tab one. Um, but I like ones that are specifically made for cookies. I feel like they, I feel like they do better. Okay. Uh, let's try to, so we're just waiting for the cookies to cool enough so that I can break them and show them to you. And I'll just continue answering questions in the meantime. For anybody joining us late, we made, uh, big fat chocolate cookies with chocolate chunks, uh, Ghirardelli's peppermint chunks, Andy's peppermint chunks, and candy cane chunks, um, in them. And we baked the first batch. They're large cookies. They're three ounces each. We're just waiting for them to cool uh, while I answer some questions. And then we will, um... Hold on, bring in the comments a little closer so I can read them a little better. And then I will break them apart and we will, well, I will, <laughs> I will enjoy them and smell them. My kitchen smells so good right now. Chocolate and peppermint. Um, uh, you need to cookie sheets. You've tried Wilton, Baker Secret. Yeah, uh, the Sir Top one I think is great. I really liked it. Um, you need brownies, please? Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I have a favorite brownie recipe that I made growing up but it uses a cake mix and I like to be as from scratch as possible. So I've been meaning to create a new version from scratch version of that, but I do have some caramel brownies on my site that are amazing. It's like this salted brownie base and it's really dense. I'm all about decadent, rich, dense desserts. I'm not really into the airy, fluffy light stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have some really dense, salty chocolate brownies with a layer of caramel on top that are just divine. Um, do I have a favorite part about you? Joseph, I've never met you, so no. Uh, a normal sponge cake. See, I'm not into sponge cakes, again, because of the whole airy thing. I do like Texas sheet cake, which is probably the spongiest thing that I make. And I do a um, an almond poppy seed sheet cake as well that I really like. But to me, they're more, because they have frosting on them, they're, like, they're like frosted brown. I don't know. I'm not really into just basic sponge cake, especially since sponge cakes are too weak to hold up a lot of the fondant design that I do, and they can't cake carve at all. So I tend to like the dense, rich cakes because they carve so beautifully. In fact, I have, I've have i been meaning to share my dense red velvet cake because um, it carves really, really well. I haven't done that yet. Uh, your daughter ruins everyone you have. Oh, that's, yeah, my kids tend to break a lot of my stuff. Um... Uh, Elena, your scoop broke and you went to a restaurant supply store to replace it. I actually got this at a restaurant supply store. Um, I don't know. It's a decent brand, too, because I have a lot from this brand. Um, yeah. 
I will have to, oh, you know what? This is, this is, this is not my good one. This is one that a brand sent me. So you're right. I should have gotten my better one. I thought this was my good one. It's not. That's the problem. Problem solved. Um, what size is the scoop? It's the extra, it's the large cookie scoop. Um, this one doesn't have a size on it. Usually if you look at cookie scoops like on Amazon, they'll be small, medium, large. This is the large one. And it's the size that I use for a cupcake batter. Um, uh, you're frying catfish this year for Christmas. You change it up every year. Margaret, I have never had catfish. That actually sounds really intriguing. Uh, Joseph, you support me and my YouTube channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, ham is what you always make, Sierra. We, I grew up and we did ham a lot growing up. Um, I do ham... Actually, I do turkey at Easter usually, too. I really like turkey. Um, but I do ham, like, throughout the year with my cheesy potatoes and homemade biscuits. Oh, now that sounds really good. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, I, I do love fish, Margaret. Our Christmas dish is baked salmon. Oh, that sounds so good, too, with lemon and butter. Oh, that sounds amazing. So I do a lemon herb salmon. And I just, I usually do a Parmesan uh, rice in my rice cooker. But... I'm trying to experiment with the Instapot more because I'm not a big fan, but people love it. So I'm trying to create recipes for it. So I'm trying to use it more. Um, and I just made the best Parmesan risotto in my Instapot. So it was really good for that. I will be sharing the recipes soon. Uh, Terry, Christmas Eve, you open one small present PJs. We do that too. <laughs> um, and then a Christmas party for Boxing Day to plan next year's goals. That's awesome. Um, I have never done that. We usually set goals on Christmas or New Year's Eve. But I like the idea of doing it on Boxy Day because New Year's Eve is so busy with its own stuff. Uh, Eunice, you love my channel. It's very good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Laura, you're in Texas. You used to fish in the Mississippi Sea. I am totally landlocked here. and There's not really good fishing here in Utah. Ugh. I miss really, really good fish. There is one grocery store that brings in pretty fresh fish, so I'm, I, I feel safe eating there, but most of the time I don't. Um... Do you post something in your local library about your cat problem? That's a great idea, Laura. I do. I have put them up on uh, our local classifieds as um, as five dollars, even though I give them away for free because I don't want like really creepy people looking for a free cat. Um, but I, I'm I'm at the point that I probably should just do that. My brother-in-law said just put them in a box and leave them outside of the elementary school. <laughs> He's creative that way. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I do have a couple boys in that mix that I have right now, but the boys ha keep running away, which I don't mind because I have too many cats. Uh, Christmas Eve, you usually frost sugar cookies and prepare an egg sausage bread casserole. My mom used to do that, an egg sausage bread casserole. I don't even have that on my blog. I don't know if my kids have ever had it because I got, mom ate it a lot. I got sick of it. But now that I'm an adult, I'm like, oh, that sounds good. I should try that again. Uh, smell -o vision They're beautiful, like crinkle cookies. Uh, kind of, kind of, uh, you have a doctor for my back brace. Uh, I have those, um, I have them in every station. I have one where I'm filming and one where I cook at the oven and one where I do dishes. I have those really thick, um, uh, mats that I stand on that help because I have really bad plantar fasciitis. So that helps a lot. I usually don't have back problems too bad, but I've gained a lot of weight. <sighs> I need to exercise more. That would probably solve all my problems. But why would I exercise when I could eat cookies? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm be great. Okay, blah, blah, blah. I think we're all caught up. Um, maybe not quite. Uh, the sound on YouTube is sketchy. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, what brand of cocoa powder do you prefer? You never know. Dutch processed or regular? Um, I have a couple different cocos. For this special, the special dark, I just use Hershey's because it's the easiest one to find. Um, but for normal cocoa, I really like the Ghirardelli's cocoa. Um, I would love to get the Ghirardelli's dark cocoa, but I haven't been able to find it. I should just order some. I just should order some. That would fix all the things. Uh, uh, okay, I think it's been long enough. Let's see if I can. Oh, good. I can pick one up. <laughs> I was afraid it would just still be all melty. Um, okay, what camera? I'll use this one. Okay. Get a little closer. All right, so here's the cookie, and I, could, where I can tell that this is the, um, this is one of the candy cane pieces right here. But I can tell that the bottom's not too brown, just from, it's not like brown from overcooking, so 
Nine minutes is probably good. Because my pan is warm now, I'll do the next batch just for eight minutes. Because, um, yeah, once the pan is warm, it makes a difference. Um, let's check this camera angle. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to wash my fingernails real fast. Nobody needs to do that. Trying to make our final shot just a little bit classier. All right. So, let's break this apart. Oh, look at that. So good. Still kind of goopy. Let's see if I can lighten this one. My other camera. figured out what I was doing wrong. All right, so they're nice and dark and they're still a little gooey-ish on the inside. See, you kind of see that goo. Oh, so good. All right, so now I get to, oh, that was good. I just licked my finger a little bit, that was so good. Mm. <laughs> that was really good, all right. The outside still has that crunch, which I love. The inside is warm and gooey. Mm. So good. I'm so glad that I added, do I have chocolate all over? I'm so glad that I added the chocolate chips. I feel like that gave it that oomph of chocolate level that I was looking for after the first time I made them. And yay, there are still candy cane pieces in here giving me a nice crunch on the inside. So that worked. Yay. <laughs> Um, yeah, and it's the perfect level of peppermint. Well, the last batch that I made where I only did the peppermint as the filling, it was a little bit high on the peppermint scale for some of my kids. I'm a peppermint, peppermint fanatic, so it wasn't too bad for me, but I feel like this balance is amazing and so much better. So that's seven cups of mix-in. <laughs> it was four cups of the semi-sweet chocolate. And again, you can see, if I can get the camera to change, you can see what I'm talking about with that Trader Joe's chocolate, how it stays runny versus staying really firm the way some chocolates do. There we go. That's probably better. Um, yeah, that's why I like the Trader Joe's chocolate chips and my cookies. Honestly, I, I just love Trader Joe's chocolate. The quality is fantastic. The price is great. Um, so yeah, when I make cookies for myself, that's what I always use. Perfect, 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 perfect. So in my name is nine minutes, the first time you use a cookie sheet, and then probably eight and a half after that, because I do let them cool. I, do, I usually use two cookie sheets, in and out, in and out, in and out. If you're just using one cookie sheet, you kind of need to let the cookies, <coughs> sorry, went down the wrong pipe. let the cookies start to set a little bit because when you pull them out they are so goopy like you're going there's no way these cookies are done trust yourself stick with the time frame and I leave them I leave the raw the fresh cookies on the cookie sheet for about four minutes then I take them off the cookie sheet and then I let them cool for another like eight to ten minutes so that is what we're looking at here uh, I will that's it super easy super fast super delicious um, again if you can't find the Andes um, baking chips or the uh, Ghirardelli's baking chips. I just bought the Andes, the peppermint little candies and cut them up or the Ghirardelli squares and cut them up um, or they do have them on Amazon. Now they should have them both at Target, but my Target was sold out. Um, so, and every single Target within a 30 mile radius was sold out because I checked them all. <laughs> um, so I ended up ordering mine on Amazon. But hopefully you have some near you um, you could always just use all Andes or all Ghirardelli's. I used, hold on my notes. I used a cup and a half of the Ghirardelli's and a cup of the Andes, but you can just do a full, and then I used a cup of crushed candy canes. So you can mix that up. Like I said, seven cups of mix in, and you can mix that up to be whatever balance that you want. So if you can find the one but not the other, it's totally okay to do that. I just like that the Andes were smaller pieces and the Ghirardelli's were larger. So when I chopped mine, I tried to match that. 
and I like having that mix of the finer and the larger. Personal preference. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, I will catch up on comments and um, and thank you and uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Uh, next week, I'm debating between doing Christmas cake pops just because there's so much work um, and doing my homemade Andes mints. They're a really popular post on the blog. I already have a video here on YouTube, but I haven't done a live. And I made the video so long ago that I probably have some tips that I didn't think of back then that I, I'm a better videographer than I used to be. So uh, let me know in the comments if you'd rather have uh, Christmas cake pops, probably like four different pop decorated or uh, homemade Andes mints. And I would do a, a green and chocolate version and I would do a red and white peppermint version. Um, for that. So let me know. I will stay on and answer questions for another couple minutes, uh, but that that is it for the recipe. So You love how rough they look from ripping them open. Yes, it's an awesome trick. It's not your weight. <laughs> Maybe, but it's an easy thing to blame everything on. <laughs> uh, my dad broke his back water skiing when he was 16. Um, and so I know I have bad back, like, in my blood. So I do, after working on a cake for, like, three days straight and not sleeping for 48 hours, I do tend to get a really bad back during that time. I probably should, like, start seeing a masseuse regularly, business expense. <laughs> um, if you're going to eat dessert, it better be rich, decadent, and full of chocolate. Kelly, amen. Yes. <laughs> Any recommendations for baking cookies when a two-and-a-half-year-old? Um just let them participate. Um, I, my kids have been cooking in the kitchen with me since they were as soon as they could ask and participate. Um, one of the things that helps is having everything pre-measured so you can just let them pour things in and you don't have to worry about the amounts being right or wrong. So by pre-measuring everything and just putting it in bowls, uh, that's really easy for kids. Um, and obviously turning on the mixer, it's loud, it makes a thing, things move, they love that. And that's not a big deal. Just make sure the lid's on before they do it. Um, wash their hands first. <laughs> uh, or, or keep um, some hand sanitizer around or like a clean rag around where you can just constantly be wiping their hands because they tend to touch their boogers a lot. Um, and whatever you do make, make sure you only bring it to your family. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, you know, boogers. <laughs> um, Pamper Chef Scoops. I'll have to try that, Kelly. Uh, but yeah, Gina, I, I just I just let my kids get in there. If it's something important and something for a client, I, I don't. I, I take care of that. And they know that. But then I try to always make sure that I do something. If they're, if they're asking to participate in the kitchen with me and I'm like, you guys can't. This is for a client. Then I try to make sure that the next thing that I make, the next treat that they're tempted by, is something that they can make um, and can be a part of. Um, really good. You broke, oh, Kelly, I'm, I'm not looking forward to breaking my back. I'm sure it'll happen someday. Um, Bosch is about $400, but it's so worth it. It is, uh, Bosch's, my mom, my mom's Bosch is 42 years old. My mother-in-law's Bosch is 50-ish years old, and they both still work great. Um, I bought my first Bosch. I have four I bought my first Bosch um, used for $200 uh, on classifieds, um, and it worked awesome. And then when I started working with Bosch and they sent me a Bosch, then I gave that old one, my old one to a cousin. Um, but yeah, it's I just asked her the other day, and it still works great for her. And I put mine through the ringer. The great thing about the Bosch is the motor doesn't break down. Uh, it's the, the plastic... Like this is the cake paddle. The plastic right here at the gears, uh, they'll break before anything else breaks, which is nice because I don't want I don't want to replace the machine. Replacing this is like 20 bucks. So that's not a big deal. So I go through these a lot. But if you're careful and you remember to switch over when your dough gets thick, you shouldn't have that problem. I'm just really rough on my stuff. Um, I think I should Oh, smell -o vision would be awesome. I agree. Margaret, thank you so much for supporting me. I appreciate that. Um, Andy's Mint is Laura's vote. These cookies look delicious. All right. It looks like a lot of you are wanting the Andy's Mint, which, hey, is way easier than cake pop, so I'm happy to do it. Uh, goat's milk soap shines your jewelry like new. That is interesting. Never tried that. 
Um, are you the only one incessantly commenting? <laughs> Kelly, I love it. I love the conversation. I love answering questions. I love feeling like I kind of get to know some of you guys. So that's really fun. Uh, I will I will put some heat on my back when I'm done and I will probably watch some Hallmark movies So am I the only one who's I have a friend who's like, oh, I don't like Hallmark movies. They're so cheesy and I'm like I'm divorced and I have five kids four have special needs. I Like a little bit of cheese in my life. <laughs> I, uh, I There's a local book group who I, I love reading. I adore reading and there's a book group in my neighborhood that I was gonna join and I went to the first meeting and they're like, okay, let's plan our books for next year. And they were like, we're going to do one self-help and one historical fiction, and no, one, blah, blah. Anyway, only one fiction book out of 12 months. And I'm like, uh, out. So I'm still looking for a book group because the rest of my life is real enough that when I take a break to read or watch a movie, I want it to be cheesy and fun and fiction and fantasy and <laughs> and all of that stuff. So anyway, uh, it looks like we're all done with the commenting. So I will see you guys next week and we will be making two kinds of Andy's mitts, green and brown and white and red. All right. Uh, thanks you guys so much for participating. This has been really fun and I need to, I need to figure out how to turn everything off because I'm using a different computer because I had computer problems this week. So give me a second. Um, it disappeared. <laughs> the turn off button disappeared. <laughs> you guys might be talking to me for a little while while I figure this out. No, not that. Stop. <laughs> Ugh, touch screens are the worst. I mean, they're nice, but they're the worst. Um, let's see if I can. I, I like a desktop computer because I like having a mouse. Laptops are not my friend. Uh, you've been walk watching the Hallmark Countdown to Christmas since it started. Uh, I don't actually have the Hallmark Channel, so I've been looking at purchasing Hallmark now for like the month to watch. But then I saw that all the new stuff wouldn't be on it, so I'm trying to figure out if I want to use Sling or one of those other services so I can watch the new stuff. I want the new stuff. Uh, you have a KitchenAid, but it's so heavy to move around. Um, the Bosch isn't too bad. I have on my blog, I have a comparison between the two. Uh, the Bosch is stronger. Um, it seems it has a bigger footprint, but because it's not as tall, it fits really easily, even under low cabinets. Um, it's really not that heavy. I mean, because it's not like steel or anything, right? Anyway, um, I like the Bosch Bosch, the one with this tower right here, because it's um, 800 watts of power. It's super, super strong. Um, I think Bosch has a video, if you look up, Bosch comparison video online. You'll see a video between the KitchenAid and the Bosch. Now I will say really, 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 really high-end KitchenAids work great, but the smaller ones that most home chefs are buying don't have the same wattage or horsepower to do the same thing. Um, I, I love that they come in pretty colors though. I really wish the Bosch would expand. I'm glad that they have the black now, that's fun, but I would love like a red or a turquoise or gold or silver or all of the colors. Um, but yeah, 20 hour surveillance in my kitchen. Pretty much, that's what we're looking at if I can't get this turned on. Same time and day next week. Yes, every Tuesday, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. Um, uh, old age is a pain. Oh, I agree. Now that I'm in my 40s, it's awful. <laughs> okay, I'm really not that old. Okay, come on, YouTube. Help me out here. The, the screen that I use to start and stop the video has disappeared on me and it's not coming back. And that was the problem I was having earlier. I couldn't get my normal computer to work, so I tried my old laptop and it worked. And now it's not working. I do have a couple other things I can do to get this turned off so you guys don't have to watch me forever, I promise. Um, if this next thing doesn't work, I will, I will do one of those. Oh, you know what? I will just do it now. I have it right here. All right, so. Uh, yeah, your KitchenAid doesn't do well with bread dough. Oh, the Bosch is amazing for bread dough. Like, seriously awesome. I'm so into bread. And I, I don't have to hand knead anything and kneading for so... Oh. If you have, if you're into bread making, then the Bosch is for sure the, the one for you. You will own a Bosch one day. <laughs> um, you would train it for barely use KitchenAid, but no one would trade you. <laughs> um, Galki, hi. Okay, uh, let's see. 
this done. Reboot. Okay, hopefully this works. I'll see you guys next week.